Okay, so I think we can maybe get started. Um, thanks again, everyone, for joining today. Uh, today's topic will be going through querying arrays with the Visual Query Builder. Um, if you have any other suggestions for webinars or something that you would like to see, please reach out to us. We're more than happy to put together what people would like to see. Um, so in today's topic, we will be looking at some common mistakes that people make when querying arrays with the Visual Query Builder. We'll look through making a simple query and we'll also look through a slightly more complex query as well. Um, as I said, if you have any questions, just type them in the chat and our team is on hand and we'll get those answered toward the end. Um, we will be recording this session, so it will be online. Uh, so if there's teammates that couldn't make it just now, um, there will be a video on our YouTube in yeah, a couple of days, a week or so. So you can share that as well. Uh, also, I'd recommend a um, final piece of housekeeping that you check out our new community space online. So that's community.studio3t.com. And there you can yeah, read some tips from the Studio 3T team, as well as other users of Studio 3T. You can post questions, get some community help. You can make suggestions for webinars, suggestions for features, and much more. So yeah, please recommend, uh, recommend checking that out as well. OK, let's get started. So here we have my Studio 3T. Uh, I have mine in dark theme as a preference, which you can just configure here. And let's jump into a collection. For today, we'll be working from my customer's 2K++ collection. And I'll collapse our connection tree here just to give everyone a full view of the screen. And if you're new to Studio 3T, I'll give you a quick orientation so we know what we're looking at. This is what we call our collection tab, which is kind of the jumping off point from a lot of our features. Up here, we have a query bar, which is split up into various sections, empty at the moment. Uh, up here, we have the option to set a default query. So if there's one or two query, or if there's a query that you run regularly, you can have this be a default. that will run automatically whenever you open up the collection. We have a search history, as well as a bookmark manager and some copy and paste options. Here we have some helpful icons where you can lock to prevent you making any unintended changes, as well as add in some documents and some value searching. And we also have various views as well. So we have a tree view, which is great for getting an idea of the structure of what's in your data. And we have a JSON view as well. But for today, we'll be working exclusively in the table view. And you'll notice it's quite brightly colored. Um, this is a preference that I've configured. So I have my data type colors turned on as well as my type icons. So I have my strings here in green. I have my dates in red, embedded objects in blue. And importantly over here, I have my arrays in this kind of purple color. You can find the key to the color coding just up in Studio 3T preferences and it's under appearance. And if you're not happy with the default, you can configure that however, which way you like. And to turn the icons and the colors on and off, it's just this gear icon here. You can have it plain. Sorry, I'm just going past. <laughs> we can have it plain, we can have icons only or colors only. And yeah, finally, um, have both. So moving on to the Visual Query Builder. To access the Visual Query Builder, we can either click up here and open it, or we can just drag a field straight away. So it's a nice simple query just to get us started. Let's look for people with the first name, Harold. We can see up here that the query bar is starting to be populated. We have some results, we can count them. We have eight. Perfect, let's change the query. Let's go for names that don't contain Harold. Again, we can see that the query is changing for us up top and we're getting more results. So the drag and drop um, is what we'll be doing a lot of today. So if we move along to our first array, we can step into it. And we can see here in this array, we have five possible interests per customer. So if we simply want to find people with gaming, we can just drag this all across. 
hit run and we'll get some results. We get 440, uh, 466 results. And you'll notice here that gaming is returned in the zeroth position. And that's because we have this index here. If we want to find customers who've listed gaming anywhere in the array, all we have to do is simply remove the index. We'll get a lot more results. And we can see here that gaming is now no longer confined to the zeroth position. We can add some extra conditions here as well. Let's say that we're looking for people who like gaming who also live in Florida. And let's say we also want to sort our results by the number of transactions descending so we can see our biggest customers first. So here we can see an example of a very simple array and a very simple query. Now we know that in real world, it's not always gonna be this simple. So we'll move on to our second array that we have in this collection that's a lot more complicated. And we'll come across the first couple of common mistakes that people make as well. So here, our second array is a scores. And in this array, we have 10 products and a score out of 10, indicating how interested each customer is within, to that product. Instead of jumping into each field like this, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to right click and show all embedded fields. And this opens everything up automatically. So again, this is a preference that you can configure. You can have this happen automatically or you can turn it on and off just by right clicking. General rule of thumb with Studio 3T, um, we recommend that you right click as much as possible. If you have a feeling that something should be there, odds are it will be when we right click. So here, one of the common mistakes that people might make is just to do the same method as what we've done with the previous query. So let's say we want films, we can drag it. We'll remove the index because we know that the data that we're looking for isn't always ordered. And let's say we want people who are really interested in films. So let's go for the scores. And again, we'll remove the index. And from this operator, I want people who've suggested eight or higher. And I also want that condition back where I only want to see people from Florida. So if we have a look at the state field, I'm confident that our query is working in that sense. But if we come along to our film section, we can see that we're not getting the results we expected. Here, this person's only a three, this person's a five, this person's a seven. So the query isn't expecting, isn't uh, returning the results that we expect. And the reason this is happening is because we're just fulfilling these three conditions. Someone has film, someone has a score of eight or higher, we can see here that the TV score here is eight or higher. And that's why this result is being returned. And that's the first common mistake that people make. So what we have to do is actually add an and or group. Then we will select has a element matching down here. And this will pull up this drop down, which we haven't seen before. From this drop down, we have the two array elements that we have either the interests or the scores. So let's look for scores. And so within the scores, we have two elements. So the first one we want is products. And we're looking for films. And the second one is the score. And we're looking for eight or higher. I also want to add in the state condition of Florida. Now, when I hit run, we're gonna get zero results here. And that's because I've made the second common mistake that people make with this feature. And that is to overlook this little button here. We know that from the color coding from the data types, this should actually be an integer. Correcting that, now we'll get some results. So using this method here, it's possible to make some quite complex queries. Um, we can add in additional conditions. 
So let's go for has array elements matching scores. Now for the product, let's go for TV. For the score, we'll go for five or less. Again, we'll change this to an integer. Add a third condition, has no array elements matching. We can select a second array here, so we'll go for interests. And because the interest array is a flat array, we only have the array element here, so that's no problem. We can leave that as is. And let's go for gaming. And let's do a sort. And again, let's do our transactions descending so we can see our most loyal customers first. And here we're down to 10 results. So using the Visual Query Builder, making sure that we're adding the and or groups in the correct place, we can see that it's quite simple to have multiple conditions applied to multiple arrays and pulling out our results. Now, once we have our results, there's a couple of options. I'll collapse this. We can export these results to a number of options, which we'll perhaps do in a second webinar, or we can jump into the explain plan, and this will give us some indication as to what's happening with the, with the query. Um, here you'll be able to see if any indexes are being accessed or anything like that. Or we can also jump into our query code tab the query code is the code translation feature here of Studio 3T. And anywhere where you can write a query in Studio 3T, you'll have these three tabs of come as a trio. So once you have your array, you can translate into various driver codes. We have Java. I'll just take it into C sharp. It's kind of highlighted copy button there to take it to your clipboard. And what's quite Interesting, uh, if we take this into the Mongo shell, we'll see that the option here for the Intelli shell is now no longer grayed out. And what that does is it allows us to take it from this format here into our shell, where we can do some additional work to it and make some extra changes. So let's say that from here, we actually want to change Florida to Texas. Here that works. We'll also have the data in a raw output as well. And you also have the option as well here to jump between the two features. So you can either come in here and code within the shell, or you have the option here to open up. Oh, double clicked. Here we have the option to open up in Visual Query Builder. So here you can actually make some changes from here as well. So it's all a preference for the way you like to work. Okay, I think we're good to wrap up. Um, thanks very much for, for joining everyone. We'll send out a link to the recording of, of this webinar. If you haven't tried Studio 3T yet, um, you get a 30 day free trial on download. And if you've already used your trial, just send an email to sales at Studio 3T and I'll be more than happy to get that extended for you. Perfect. Okay. Thanks very much, everyone. Have a good, enjoy the rest of your day.